May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Seat. Thought I'd start with the story. A little while ago, um, I went bushwalking, and um, it was a lovely walk, uh, and I came to a path, and the path separated, and there was a sign, and it said, you know, go this way to walk across the top of the waterfall, and this way to walk across at the base, and I couldn't decide, so I took both, and it was a lovely walk, and I walked across the top of the waterfall, and I looked down, and, and I looked at the bottom, and I saw the water falling, and then I got to the end of the path, where the path re-emerged, and it was really handy because there was a step up and I could help myself up. There's probably something in you that's going, I don't think that's an entirely accurate story, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> what it is, is it's my really bad metaphor for what's called uh, superposition. And what it is, is this, you know, in the world, uh, some things are big and some things are small. And when you get very small, um, you get down to smaller than an atom. The rules start to get a bit odd. And one of my favorite rules is the rule for electrons, which say that electrons get to make the choice I made in the made up story I told you. There's a weird thing about electrons they can come to a part, the part splits, they take both. One electron takes both parts, gets to the end, and then can interact with itself. That is not intuitive, is it? There's no part of us that goes, well, that makes sense. Yeah, that feels right. However, uh, scientists who are much smarter than me, they've done all the research and they've done experiments, and they, they demonstrated this. See, sometimes our intuition about these things is not to be trusted. We need to look at our experience. So our intuition about the nature of God doesn't necessarily immediately lead us to Trinitarian theology. It doesn't. And, and I need to be very clear. Nowhere in Scripture is there a carefully laid out Trinitarian theology. Nowhere does Jesus sit down with his disciples and say, look, just so you know, the, the relationship between myself as Christ and the Father is this, and then there's the Holy Spirit who's going to be coming along shortly, and uh, this is how it all works. That doesn't happen. Paul doesn't have a worked out theory or theology of the Trinity. It's not in there. What is in there, though, is experiences. And then the first experience is an experience that we all get to be a part of. Take a breath in and a breath out. That's the experience of being. That's the experience of, of being alive. That's the experience of being a part of creation. And so the first experience that, that any human being has is the experience of being. And in Scripture, we understand that as having its ultimate source in God. In God, the, the creator of all that is. And we use the language of God, the Father. And in the Bible, we read about this person, Jesus, who has this very particular and unique relationship with God. very particular relationship, such that we look at that and we go, the only way to understand this is that that is God with us. And yet, and yet we also recall these moments where Jesus goes and prays, and so we go, well, that doesn't make sense, unless there is something about the nature of Jesus that is both God with us and distinct from God the Father. And then we get together on a Sunday morning and we, we, we say the greeting of peace with our neighbours and we chat at the door and we experience community but we also experience a community that 
draws us into something more. It's not, it's not a, a Sunday morning coffee gathering where we get together with our friends and we just say, how are you? It's something that draws us into more. It's something that guides and leads us. It's, it's, it's God with us, but in a way we wouldn't necessarily have expected from the stories of Jesus, except for Jesus gives us clues. It's the Holy Spirit who is with us, who is in the relationships between us, who is whispering to us the words we should pray. And we experience God that's distinct from the Jesus in Scripture and is distinct from the God that is the source of and yet is the same as. And so our experiences have to trump our intuition. Our experiences of God as three trumps our intuition that that just doesn't make sense. Don't trust it. Trust the data like scientists do. And we could sit there and just leave that as a meditation. What's it like to trust our experiences of God? But I wanted to say more, so I'm going to. <laughs> when you've got the stage, own it. Um, I was thinking about the environment. And I don't just mean sort of the lovely grounds here and trees. And I was thinking about the way the church is called to care for God's creation. And how, for many people, that seems like an odd thing. But that's because they think the church is only about what we do in this building. And it's not. The church is how we live our lives, here and outside. And it makes sense if you think of, if you understand that God is the creator of all. That we should care for that which God created. See, our theology, our practice, falls out of. This God is Father. And then we think about how God chose to be with us. Chose to be one of us. And not in a, you know, the Christmas story, how for many hundreds of years, because people couldn't read, when they did the birth of Jesus, they did it in a palace, because they couldn't read the scripture, and they didn't understand that Jesus was born in a stable. And we thanked St. Francis for making the first nativity scene, uh, as we understand it. You see, Jesus is God demonstrating care for, for the poor and the broken and the lost and you and me. And so it makes sense, doesn't it, that that should be a part of our practice, that we care for the poor and the lost and the broken and you and me. See, our theology and our practice comes out of these things. And then the Holy Spirit who is with us, who says it matters how we hear the voices of others and how we hear the voice of God and what we do and how we pray. And so our own spirituality is called to be deeper and more connected to God and to others. See, Christian theology isn't just a bunch of nice, neat ideas that stand in isolation. Rather, there is, it's a scaffold by which we might grow in our own faith and understanding of God. So on Trinity Sunday, might I encourage you to trust your experiences of God. And to have the courage to let those work out in your own lives. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.